All right, you guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I am here by the riverbank, baby. It has been quite a while since I've done some trout fishing. The weather today is pretty nice, I must say so. It's like in the 50s. I went to Walmart last night and I couldn't find any of my old trout rods because I'm a mess, but I got little Shakespeare set up here. He was like 20 bucks, rod and reel combo. All right, so this, this rod came, um, and the reel came pre-rigged with a six pound mono. So I usually would use six or four. Laser focus here. I'm just gonna be using, I got a few spinner baits at Walmart too. That's my go-to for trout fishing. I love the chartreuse color. This is a little one eighth ounce rooster tail with a treble hook. The trout in this river are stocked trout. So how smart could they really be? This stretch of the river uh, was stocked like 10 days ago, hoping it hasn't been completely fished out, but the weather has been so cold. I don't foresee that that many people went fishing. All right. I'm just gonna make a couple casts right above these rapids real quick. Whoa! Looks like I'm having some malfunctions of my own. This thing has plastic on the reel still. I did not see that. Okay in my pocket. Now we're good to go. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm not feeling too confident about this little spot. So I'm gonna move below the rapids a little bit. There's kind of a really nice eddy or whatever you would call it right below the rapids. So let's go check it out. You getting geared up? getting geared up for this honey hole right here. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? Probably. No. Oh, this is muckalucky. Walmart special, baby. Alright, you guys, I'm gonna give this about 10 more minutes. Try this hole above the rapids, kind of right where this little bend is. See if we can catch anything. If not, we're gonna change locations. Alright, guys, so I don't know if you can see, but in the frame, there's a tent right there. Right across the river. I don't know how I did not notice that until just now, but I think I'm gonna head out <laughs> and go find uh, another spot to fish. That's super sad. Look at the cute mallards. All right, you guys, I think that's a wrap at this area. We're gonna go to another spot that's a lot more tried and true and a little less, little less city oriented. All right, guys, made it to the new location. As you can see in the background, there's still cars and stuff. Technically, we're still in a city area, but this is like a city trout fishing video. The last time I stocked this river here uh, was also on the 20th, I believe, or no, 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 December 5th. So it's been almost a month, um, but I like these waters much better. So stay tuned, we'll see if we can't catch a couple. Ice fruit, whoa. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. Got some ice here from where the river came up on the bank during this flood. And then this cold weather we've been having, it's just brutal out here. The river looks beautiful. Uh, it's not too high, it's not too low, it's crystal clear. I spoke a little too soon. 
this uh, rapid does look like it's moving a lot faster and mightier than times past where I've fished it. So I'm hoping the water level isn't too high right now to fish this spot, but only one way to find out. No luck yet. All right guys, so I've moved just a little bit below the rapids that I was just trying. We'll see what this spot has in store. Ah, Andy just said that he's gotten one. He's a little bit further down the stream from me, so I'm about to hooge in on his spot because that's, that's just what you do. <laughs> All right, you guys. I can't let Andy outfish me, so. What? What? What thing cast that for? Uh-huh. In the real place, too. Oh, not. Oh, it came out. Nope, it didn't. Yeah, that's a gone lure. Maybe not. Just smack me in the face with it. Look at that. Did you get it? No. It's time to change. It's time to change colors anyway. No. I'm moving. Don't move. Back in action. Alright guys, so I feel like this pool is a little bit too deep for the weight that I'm using here. I need something a little heavier, which I don't have. So I'm gonna go up just a little bit where it's a little more shallow and see if we can't find one. Just one is all I want, please, just one. Oh guys, there's one right there, dead. It's not a good sign. All right, feeling good about this spot, guys. Feeling good about it. Alright guys, this is the last shot for me here, uh, last spot I'm going to try, changing my spinner one more time, got this, I've been using gold blades all day, no bites, so, alright, fingers crossed that this does the trick, it's a Hail Mary right here guys, just want one trout, one trout. Well guys, I guess that's a wrap. I'm waving the white flag. Oh, I haven't been skunked in so long. Trout fishing, this river. This hurts a little bit, but. I've literally said this like 10 times now, but this is my true last cast, last couple casts here. Ah, all right, you guys, I am back at the river. I am not giving up. I was super stubborn last time and would not try a different bait because I've just always had luck here with spinners, particularly the chartreuse spinners. They've always worked for me here in the past, but I didn't have anything else to use that day. And Andy was using kind of like a little mini jig head with a little uh, gulp, Berkeley gulp minnow on the back of it. And I was just too stubborn to, to put one on. But obviously that's the kind of action that they were wanting. That's the kind of 
fall that they were looking for. So I brought out a new arsenal today to try out, to try to redeem myself. Literally just left Walmart before I came down to the river and I got, I thought these were pretty cool. Little power bait, pink tube skirt type thingies. Now these were what worked last time for Andy. So I've got these on backup. The little trout magnet in the middle kind of type vibe and then the tube skirt on the outside. We're gonna give it a shot. The tube just fell apart. Great, all right, we're off to a pretty bad start. What do you guys say? I just throw this out though, see what happens. At this point, you know what? I could just restart this whole video over and act like none of that just happened, but that wouldn't be realistic. That wouldn't be relatable. I mean, you can't tell me, or maybe it's just me. I don't know, but I've been having the worst fishing luck lately. I haven't been able to do a lot of fishing in a while. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna just stop being stubborn and I'm gonna try the, uh, the gulp minnow, okay? I don't know why I'm being so stubborn, but I saw with my own eyes that it catches fish and I just need to, to give in to uh, trying something new that someone else recommended. Little realistic looking minnow. Let's try this bait out. Wow. Alrighty then. Okay, I am a believer. Shout out, Andy. This is the juice. <laughs> First cast with this thing. I let my ego go and I gave it a try. First cast, caught one. Okay. Alright, I admit that's pretty awesome. We got a trout, baby. <laughs> oh, look how they eat it too. Perfectly little perfect little lip hook there. All right, I'm super excited now. Oh my gosh, I broke the, the non-fish catching ice. Yes, one on the stringer. Be careful. Bothering me. <laughs> you better. So guys, my dad showed up to join me for a little trout fishing and he's of course always the one to fall in the river. All right guys, so my dad claims that the fish <laughs> are over here by this rock cliff wall. Yeah, this is where uh, he fell in and injured his ribs like a year or so ago, but he loves this spot. And anyway, he was just trying right here on the log, didn't catch anything, but he's like, if you could make it a little further over there, cast between that little cliff rock and that deep pool he's like that's where the trout are so i'm gonna go give it a shot i gotta cross in some water and i did not bring water shoes i got cowboy boots on this is not gonna be fun dang it dad oh dang it dad ha. i made it across Okay. Okay.
that about does it for me. That's like the fourth time I've broken off. So I think it's time to try another hole. All right, you guys, we've got a new spot here. I need to re-rig because I broke off at the last one, but I'm gonna put just one of the smaller jig heads on there and a Berkey Gulp minnow. What's wrong? All right, you guys, we're gonna give this one last two raw here, about 10 minutes, this last hole, see if we can't make this one trout a pair and head home and cook them up for dinner. Oh, dang it, what? I had one on. You're alive. Oh, it was a nice one. That was super fun. I got to do some trout fishing on the river with my dad which is honestly where it all started for me. I love, 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 love those memories. I strangely only caught that one trout right there at the beginning. Nice little rainbow. And I mean, I would have liked to have caught some more. I wish my dad would have gotten one, but I am just happy to, that, I've, that I've redeemed myself and maybe, maybe shaken off a little bit of that bad fishing juju that I've had lately. I did end up keeping that one rainbow. I'm definitely going to cook it up. I guess days like this, every time I go fishing, I am reminded that what fishing and life is all about. And perseverance, patience, and just slowing down to enjoy the little things and appreciating nature. Loved every bit of it and <sighs> finally got hooked up. So stay tuned for the cook and I'll do a little taste test for you guys. All right guys, I am down at the dock. I'm at the lake for a couple days. So I figured this would be a good spot to fillet this trout. I've had this nice little bow on ice all night and we're gonna get it prepared to cook. It is super windy today, so I hope you guys can hear me. I am not going to fillet this guy. I'm actually just going to simply do a little scaling. The scales, you really don't need to do that, but it's so slimy, it just kind of helps get rid of the slime. And then I'm just going to simply gut him because we're gonna be cooking this guy whole. So as you can see, the scales are super tiny. Um, you really don't need to take them off, but like I said, it's getting a lot of that slime off of there, which is good in order to help get the skin when we cook it nice and crispy. I really hope the wind doesn't blow my phone into the water. <laughs> All right, so this next part is super easy. Just start right here, the exit hole, if you will. Without going too deep, all the way up to the throat, just like that. And then when you get up here, we can just cut the entire head straight off. And throw that for the minks. And then all of the guts just simply come.
straight out. Now, as you can see, there is a bloodline. All of that needs to come out as well, but I'm gonna do that down in the water because you kind of can just break it apart with your finger and then wash it, wash it away with the water. Just take my thumb and just break that straight apart. It comes straight out of there. And now we have a beautiful, freshly cleaned rainbow trout. Let's head to the kitchen, baby. All right, guys, obviously we've made it to the kitchen and I really have limited in ingredients here because um, Andy and I don't spend a ton of time here at the lake. Uh, we're usually at the farm, so it's kind of hard, hard to have fresh groceries at each place all the time. Um, but with that being said, I want to show you guys how delicious you can make a simple trout with simple ingredients. Little rainbow and I like to pat it nice and dry. So again, we are going to do everything we can to get that skin nice and crispy. You can use olive oil or butter, but this is the best of both worlds. It's, um, it's butter with olive oil in it. I feel like I like the mixture of using butter and olive oil because in my experience, it makes it nice and crispy. So we're definitely not gonna be shy with the butter. I'd say at least two tablespoons of butter in there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and season the fish. My go-to seasonings are lemon pepper. Absolutely try to coat that thing. A little bit of garlic salt. So do that on both sides and on the inside. Your butter and olive oil should be pretty hot, so go ahead and just drop your fish straight in there. And I forgot one little detail. Um, it's actually easier to season the other side of the fish once it's in the pan, so none of that seasoning comes off. So again with the garlic salt and lemon pepper, do not be shy with your seasonings. <laughs> this is what it's looking like. I would say timing wise, probably two to three minutes on each side. I feel like I should have used a cast iron pan to get the nice crispy skin that I'm looking for. But um, so yeah, if you do this, use a cast iron pan. I feel kind of silly doing a step-by-step -step with this because I feel like most people have cooked trout before. So comment down below what your what your favorite trout recipes are and I would love to try them. All right, I think it's ready for a flip. Thing is burning just a little bit, but it's okay. We've got a little bit of a crispy skin, crust on the skin going there. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes on this side and then I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do next. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn this baby off. I've got a full blown audience in here. There's Bruiser, Elo, and Charlie. All right, so next I'm going to squeeze, I would use a lemon, but again, limited ingredients here. I got a lime though, so just as good. I'm gonna squeeze that all over the fish and the pan to really loosen up all of the seasonings that's stuck on the bottom there. I'm gonna do some garlic leftover lime slices here. I'm just going to add them, throw them straight into the fish, inside the cavity of the fish. I've got the oven on broil. So I'm gonna throw this fish in there just for a few minutes. The trout just came out of the oven and it is piping hot. We got a nice crust on there, nice garlicky smell with some fresh citrus limey juice. Obviously, I've got to do a taste test for you guys. That's just what I do. This thing is super hot right now, obviously, but I'll take these lime pieces out. And show you guys that 
a benefit of cooking it whole, ooh, it's hot, can literally take out all of the bones with one sweep. There they come. The bones just pull out, the whole skeleton pulls straight out, and then you can just kind of rake the meat, rake the meat straight off of the bone. Look at that. No bones in there at all. Mmm. You guys, I'm so good. So yeah, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but there's some meat left on here and you can literally just pull it straight off of the bones. That way, I mean, trout, trout is such a bony fish, as you can see, that when you fillet it, a lot of the times you're left with bones and that's fine if you want to cook it like that but to me I just think this is so much easier because you get all the bones out of there and then you can just enjoy the fish here's a little piece of the crispy tail mm. all right guys well I just wanted to say that I am super grateful and thankful for catching this one trout and being able to harvest this delicious feast right here just one trout but it completely made my day and meal obviously so thank you dear lord jesus for that and thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next video